Hello friends, my name is Maddie McLean. I am a Canadian in Eurovision and today I am ranking the queens from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 14 because everyone else already has so I may as well put my two cents in. Now this season was a long season. It didn't feel like a long season at the start, but man, it got long. It was, it was a long, long season. But at least it got you a sense that you could kind of get a sense of who these queens more a little bit more than other seasons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank these ones, see where I would fit them in, and essentially just going forward. Now this is nothing against any of these queens, and it's also nothing against their personalities, because a lot of them are just edited a specific way, so for the stories that the producers were going for, they just didn't click. But... No one here was bad. There was no one this season who I think was, like, an F-tier queen. I don't think anyone here had, like, any kind of negative, uh, like, edit. I don't feel like they're, well, maybe diabetic a little bit. But, you know, this is kind of my opinion. This is what I think of them. And we'll go forward. So, I think it's only fair to start from the beginning of the boots and then go through. And I... Guess I technically mean the actual boots instead of bringing back Orion Story and Daya Betty right away. But the first one out was June Jambalaya. Um, it was kind of fair. Her outfit wasn't that great. She, you can tell she wasn't giving the producers many storylines. Um, she is beautiful. I really liked what she represented, but I did think that she fell a little flat in terms of how she's presenting herself. And it's nothing against her. She was just simply edited in such a way where she doesn't. She never really got a chance to stand out, unfortunately. So she would probably be one of the weaker of the bunch. Um, Alyssa Hunter, I think, had really great looks. And I feel like she did a really good job in terms of presenting herself, representing what she was trying to do. Um, there was a lot that was really likable about her. But in the end, uh, her time was cut short rather unfairly, I think. I don't feel like the challenge she went out on was her worst, was the worst of the night. But overall, uh, she did present with a certain amount of charisma. She did present with a certain amount of personality. And you could really sense that there was something uh, very special about her. So I, I will keep her in the like area. But again, there's no one here that I really don't like. I would happily go see any of these queens to bar. It's just kind of how the cookie crumbled. Uh, third out, I believe, was Maddie Morphosis. Um, obviously, I love the name. Uh, I didn't think that her drag was as elevated, but I also don't think that the critique she was getting was very fair. When you're telling someone to, like, step their pussy up or anything like that, it's gonna, like, what does that comment mean? And I think that Maddie had the complete right idea by being like, what, what are you talking about? What is this that you are saying? How are you... Like, there was a lot of confusion in terms of what she was trying to present and what the judges were receiving. So overall, I think that she's very strong. I loved the concept of a lot of her looks. Uh, I love the conceit of a lot of her looks. I think that she brought a lot of interest, especially with her storyline as being the first straight queen. Yeah, what can I say? Maddie did great. Um... Overall, though, I feel like her package fell a little flat, and nothing against her, but I do think that was something that kind of came out in the editing, was that she was someone who tended to fade into the background, unfortunately. Uh, we have Orion's story. Another similar story. I think that Orion didn't really have as much of a chance to shine as other queens. They didn't seem to focus on her personality. I feel like they were trying to make her the boring queen, they were kind of trying to push her to the side and not really seeing what was special about her, not trying to dig in to give her a lot of really interesting things to work with. So overall, I do think that she suffered because of that, but I don't think that a lot of that's her fault. A lot of these things are just as simple as the way you read something can have a huge impact on how something comes across. So because I'm doing all of these things off the top of my head, I don't write a script for these and I feel like there's moments that you can really capture someone's personality and their energy, but if they're not conscious of what they're able to present or what they can bring outside of the standard, oh, hello, this is me talking head, I don't think that there would be a lot of them, uh, that there's not a lot there that people can work with and the producers would be more likely to push her aside. And it's kind of unfair to these four queens because the rest of the, we spent a lot of time with these queens. We spent 
time, like weeks and weeks and weeks where no one went home. There were situations, well, Cornbread went home. But Cornbread, come on. Queen of the season. Easy queen of the season. Everyone loves her. Everyone thinks she's amazing. She's like, what happens when Silky is trans and actually super personable as well as being rambunctious? Uh, straight talk, like, there's nothing about Cornbread that I didn't like. She presented well. I think she's super cool. I really love her energy, her spirit. There's a, there's so much there to look into. And, you know, it's only fair that out of all of the queens that were there, she really was something just, just really special. And I know that she's planning to step away from drag, and that's totally fair. Like, everyone has the ability and the right to be able to do that, and if she's even just relying on her personality, uh, I think she'll have a lot of fans lining up to see that and to, to continue to... I'll continue to stand on her. I think that there's going to be a lot of fun in life there. Carrie, I think, uh, also presented really, really well on camera. I think that there was something about her. Obviously, there was the joke that she was turning everyone trans, which, you know, I feel like had there been a Carrie Colby on other seasons, maybe more of those queens would have come out sooner. Um, there's nothing new about being trans. There's nothing wrong about being trans. It's a really amazing experience, and to see such a positive legacy on television for someone, like, there's so much negativity going around around the trans community right now that it's really up to a lot of us to step up and be a part of it and be like, hey, these people are, you know, dying, and maybe that's not okay, so I'm going to get super political out of there for no apparent reason. But I think it's worth saying, because, you know, she represents something very real, she represents something very lovely, and a very, very strong, powerful, beautiful force that I'm happy was there, and I think a lot of other people were as well. Uh, no one went home after this for a long time, and then finally Jasmine did. I really enjoy Jasmine. I would say, I would put her in the, the middle of the pack area for myself. Um... I see a lot of myself in Jasmine in the sense that, you know, when I got my ADHD diagnosis, a lot of the symptoms that she was getting criticized for on the show kind of flagged in my head. And I was just like, oh, does she know she's ADHD? Is she ADHD? Does she know that? And I think she should have an idea, especially when you're in a creative field. You tend to gravitate towards these things. You tend to be a part of that, that environment and that energy. So overall... Jasmine, beautiful soul, I hope she knows she has ADHD, and I don't mean that in a bad way, it really is the best thing that someone can have, in my opinion, because it makes me super cool, and yeah, I feel very, very confident putting her there. Uh, Deja Sky, I, I kept waiting for Deja to arrive, and I don't feel like Little John was amazing, but every week I was kind of expecting Deja to go. And it's nothing against her. Again, no hate being sent. I just feel like there wasn't a lot that she was giving. I feel like her runways were very, not one note, but they're very, I don't know, particular. And I don't feel like they landed as well as we wanted them to for her. Especially when she started, like, she started out claiming she was a costume queen. And I don't feel like what she presented matched that narrative. So we'll see. We'll see what they do. Uh, Georges, I'm really, like, I'm not a big Georges stan. I think that she was lovely, had good energy, really fun. Um, I feel like RuPaul's love for Georges took away from other people's love, so it's like you almost can't love her as much just because RuPaul loves her too much. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. Uh, there was, there was a lot going on there, but we're at the top five, and... Yeah, they were... Why a top five? I still don't think that was... But whatever, it's fine. It's fine, it happened. No one really did badly. Um, I honestly thought the top two should have been Angie and Willow. But it was Lady Camden and Willow, both of whom I think are fine. So let's start with Bosco and Daya. Uh, Daya was someone I, I enjoyed, 
She's a really good narrator of the season. She had a lot of personality. She went home first. Uh, I do think that the judges are making a really big deal. Oh, you look like Crystal Method. Oh, you look like Crystal Method. And suddenly it's just like, oh, no, you still look exactly the same. But now we're going to say that you don't look like Crystal Method anymore. And I'm just like, that doesn't make sense. Either she is or she isn't. Make up your damn minds and just go, like, let her eat the dragonfly. That was possibly the coolest event of the entire season. Just like, wow. All right, eating bugs. Good way to, you know, make that... No, good way to normalize eating of bugs. Uh, Bosco, the underrated fashion queen of the season. I also really liked Bosco. I will say that Bosco, I think, had a really good personality. I liked her feistiness. Didn't anticipate her going as far as she did. Uh, you kind of knew that someone would have the golden chocolate and it would likely be her. So, you know, it makes sense. She did deserve the second chance. She came back swinging. She came back very strong. And overall, like, she's beautiful. And I love what she does. I... The eyebrows are always a choice for me. I don't mind them. But I'm just like, if you're going to do a signature eyebrow like a Sasha Velour, it's good to have a distinct shape. But I always thought that her eyebrows never quite complemented her face shape as much as I wanted them to. But I, who cares? Like, she loves them. She looks great in them. Good for her. Moving on. Uh, Angeria, check. Did great. Hilarious. Super professional. Super pageant. Very, very interesting. Very, very nice. We knew she couldn't win. And the reason why is because for the past three seasons, they've had three black winners in a row. And I know that has no actual impact on stuff, but it does. Like, you want... You want the people to win to win without having a narrative behind them that's that's tying them to legacy stuff that they have no control over. So obviously she had no control over the fact that there were other black queens before her that won. And all of them very worthy winnings. Jada, very worthy winning. Evie Oddly, very worthy winner. Uh, like, all of them. Everyone who's won this, with the exception of one season, and definitely, you know... Everyone knows what season I'm talking about. Uh, with the exception of one season, all the winners are pretty strong. And I don't throw any shade towards any of them. But coming off of Simone, I think it was time for a change. And I think that's kind of why they decided to go with Lady Camden and Willow at the final three. Uh, mainly because I think Lady Camden actually did some really interesting and unique stuff. That lands her in the love category for me. I really enjoyed her looks throughout the whole thing. I liked her old story of being a Spice Girl. And, you know what? I think that she did a wonderful job representing uh, the UK Queen idea. I think that she represented... She, did she need to fall multiple times with the wig reveal? No. But she did it once, and it was really effective, and it worked really well. And she did it at the end, and just like, it's still fine. I'm not mad at it. It, it. it did what she needed it to do, so that's the important thing. And obviously our winner, Willow Pill, I think is second only to Cornbread. And I think that there's something kind of nice about them being together on top. They're just like, yeah, they're a beautiful pairing. Super cool to see their friendship grow. But Willow really was a force this year. Uh, her unique style. I love it when someone thinks outside the box because I feel like that's how I think. And I feel like what she did throughout the entire thing, from her coming in with Angle on her shirt, God, she's smart. She played everything really close to her chest. She played everything very, very smartly. She did great. There is nothing bad that I can say about Willow Pill. So, how do I compare to the public in general? Uh, let me find out. Alright, here I am. I am back again, and I am comparing mine with the tops. So, Cornbread on top. No surprise there. Uh, Bosco on top. Sure, I can see that. I think that she's very worthy. So, cool. Carrie on top. Absolutely. Understand Willow on top. Right on brand. Angeria Love, absolutely Georgia's Love, sure, why not? Uh, like Maddie, absolutely, very worthy. Lady Camden, for sure, I had her a little higher, but that's fine. Deja, sure, Jasmine here, all right. Uh, people really didn't like Diane in June. Uh, I don't think that's entirely fair, but, oh man, to have Alyssa and Orion and Disgusting, that's just mean, that's wrong, no. You got that wrong, people. So, yeah. That's the that's the score. So this is how I ranked it. How would you rank it? Anyone outside of the ordinary that you wanted me to see? 
Uh, any other seasons of Drag Race you want me to do, let me know. So apart from that, thanks for watching. Uh, you can find me online at the Big Shabam on Twitter and Instagram, and you can find my podcast, a Canadian in Eurovision, on problematic streaming platform Spotify. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.